the divisions in America with regard to the terrorism, with regard to the ethnocentrism, the ethnophobia, the xenophobia, the prejudice and the bigotry. I don't use the word race or racist or racial. Those words are incorrect and they're not helping. In fact, they're giving credence to those who are prejudiced. With regard to these challenges that we have, not problems, the solution is clear. It's not limiting free speech. It's not dialing anything down on social media. If anything, what we learned from the Tipper Gore era was that it is better to hear what's in the rap music, to gauge what's going on in the inner city, than it is to clamp down and silence people. No. America needs a philosophy. America doesn't have a philosophy. It has disparate and multicultural ideas, which we've heralded as our blessing, as our triumph, but it is also our challenge. We don't have a philosophy. We have rights that we point to. We have a Bill of Rights and a Constitution, which can barely be read by most Americans, because our problem is our education system, which needs an underlying philosophy if not drummed in to be sung and spirited and chanted and learned verbatim by the American student. Yes, the child. How can you combat the problem of guns when we don't have a comprehensive agreement on what's sensible, when people can't read the Second Amendment, and when those who do and champion it lie about what it says with a philosophy? We must indoctrinate, yes, indoctrinate our youth with an idea such as the ideas that must be being bandied about in the schools of Asia, where the people are cooperative, where the people are not docile but respectful, where the people are not at each other's throats but very reticent to say anything to one another which is disturbing one another. Americans don't learn decorum. They learn, I have a right to say what I want, I have a right to do what I want, and that winds up with the attitude, I have a right to carry the weapon that I want. We need a philosophy taught to children which is benevolent and co cooperative and, yes, communal. Because we're always going to have people with mental aberrations and we're not going to agree on the gun laws. America has proven that it doesn't mind suffering thousands of deaths each year. Or it doesn't mind that the majority want that mitigated, but that it allows a minority to run the country. Now a minority runs the country from the courts and a minority runs the country from the White House and a minority runs the country from the legislature and we seem to be okay with that. What would be the fastest way to better policies, whether they be philosophical in education, or they be about gun laws, or they be about local policy, or foreign policy, or energy policy? We need to ban private campaign finance. Our elections are in the hands of PACs and wealthy people. We should pay for our elections with our own dollars and cents, the way we pay for NASA. Men and women go into space each year without a fatality and they come back safely on space stations where they live and in spacecraft on which they travel and they're safe because we spend two cents on the tax dollar to pay for it. Well, why can't we pay for our own elections? If we paid for our own elections, most, if not all, of the corrupt individuals in politics now would go running like rats from a sinking ship. They are there because they can't do something else. They would have to go get real jobs. And speaking of jobs, that's what elections should be about. Have one meet the press, one debate, have one public service announcement, and have one town hall meeting in several cities for a candidate, and that's it. Within the matter of a month, we would have an election. Right now, we have a beauty pageant, we have a circus, we have a popularity concert and contest run by money. Money is the obstacle to all of this, to better education, to a national philosophy, to cooperation. Now, for those of you who would say we are not a country such as we find in Asia or in Europe, we are a federation of states, we are a union, and so the laws in different states cater to different cultures, fine. But we would eventually come to commonality, and we wouldn't be so divided if money didn't decide elections, you wouldn't have completely amoral Republicans acting like whores 
in the heartland of America and in the South and be tolerated. They wouldn't be tolerated if money were not deciding who ran for office. If background and experience were the mitigating factors, if moral fiber were the mitigating factors in place of money, perhaps with a civil service exam, and with those public speeches that I mentioned, then we wouldn't have to worry about complete decrepitude of our moral fiber, of our moral fiber in the legislature. This recent appointment of Mr. Kavanaugh, an obvious glaring example to the rest of the world of how immoral and corrupt our politics have become. The fact that someone like Donald Trump, a poor real estate salesman who basically achieved fame and success because of monthly allowances from his father and from corrupt business practices, swindling of tenants in his buildings, lying, not paying people, that he could be in the White House is a laughing stock, a joke, and a stain of shame on the United States. Presidents should come from academic backgrounds. They should be intellectuals. They should be well-traveled, well-spoken, and well-educated. And until we are ready to pay for our own elections, that will not be the case. And we will not adopt a national philosophy, and we will be divided from state to state, gerrymandered, paid for by corrupt billionaires, and we will continue to be a menace to the earth. The only solution, unequivocally, is paying for our own elections and eventually having policies that come out of such a moral system. The only solution which would come from that would be to have a national philosophy where young people are taught to love one another and to act in a way in accordance with a civic brotherhood. Right now, everyone can teach what they want, believe what they want, and do what they want, and we're talking about limiting social media. No, the answer is not dialing down public speech. It is improving the quality and the virtue of the citizen. Thank you.